Good morning. My name is Jason Julian, for those of you that don't know. I'm the current president of the American Robot Association and one of their CPL leg inspectors. There's been a lot of discussion ongoing in the American Robot Association with people overseas and people of other groups and different opinions, and that's great. It's good to discuss the problem. CPL is chronic progressive lymphedema. There's been a lot of discussion of how much of it is genetic and how much of it is environment and management. It is the ABA's stance that environment, the environment you leave your horse in, and management, the conditions, how you manage your horse and the conditions you leave it in, have a lot to do with the horse's outcome. Although we maintain it is absolutely a genetic disorder. In discussions with geneticists the ABA boards had on, they agree that they, can, they cannot find the gene, they don't know if it's a mutation, multiple, multiple mutations within one gene, they don't know. They can't find it with current technology. Although they agree that there's a certain phenotype of horse that exhibits it worse, and those are usually heavily feathered horses across several breeds, Frisians, Shires, Clydesdales, um, American Belgians, some Perchins, and especially the European Belgian in Belgium and Netherlands and many countries. The European Belgian has been the found, founding gene pool for many breeds, including the American Belgian, the German Rhinish, all over Europe. The reason being is it was the premier workhorse. It was the premier workhorse that everyone coveted about 140, 150 years ago in the late 1800s. Everybody was importing Belgian stock to improve their own. We, we all agree on that. The difference is, is that Belgian horse from 140 years ago doesn't look anything like the Belgian horse that Europe has today, that Belgian and Netherlands has today. So we're maintaining that even though CPL was around over 100 years ago, and we have photographic evidence of this, it is much more prevalent today in the phenotype, the type of horse that they have developed. Um, so we wanted to test that argument a little bit. Um, is it Their argument is it's 70% management and 30% genetic. In the ABA, we feel that that is at least, the proportions are at least if not mostly genetic, and then how the genes present themselves, all you can do is manage what you have from there. If you leave your horse stand around in a muddy lot and don't get exercise and let them get overweight, you are going to exasperate the problem. But if you have a bad horse, when I say bad, I mean the CPL is a very aggressive. Um, there's really nothing you can do. You can manage and manage and manage, and the horse is still going to suffer and it's still going to progress. Chronic progressive lymphedema is just that. It progresses throughout their life. Now, if you have a clean horse and you manage it correctly, you may never have issues. And if you have a clean horse and manage it poorly, you still can create problems. So you see all the different options you have. But our goal in the ABA is to breed a better horse. What we mean by a better horse is clean of feathers, clean of skin folds, and clean of nodules. To do that, we're trying to imitate the Belgian horse from around 1880 to the first world. And we have three mares behind me. They're sired by the same sire in the same year. They're all 13 and a half years old. So they are mature mares. So they're all half sisters by the same 100% European sire. They all have different mothers. Although the two Bayerones, Polly and Hannah, their, their dams were full sisters. Uh, so they're very closely related. Eve, on the other hand, the blue roan over here, is on a quite hitchy American Belgian mare. Um, I know some of you, you're gonna need some background on this, but. The American Belgian is, there's three different types of American Belgian and the Hitchy type is the tallest and thinnest legs and the least feather. And her mare was somewhere between a, a Hitchy mare and a farm bred mare. She was definitely not pulling bread. So we have, and so that, I'm just pointing out the differences in, in their dams. Their sire was the same. They're all 13 and a half years old. They've all been on this farm their entire life. They've received the same rations. They've received essentially the same amount of work. They are all maintained at the same weight. If they're nursing, they get thin. If they're working hard in cold weather, they may get thin. They may get a little chubby on pasture at certain times or if they get a layoff period. So we just wanted to see and test that theory. That if this is 70% management and 70% environment, then you would expect very similar results in the legs. If this is a genetic disease and the genes play a large role, well then even with the same management and the same age and the same care, then they could have very different results because the genes have exhibited themselves differently in each horse. So we're gonna do a leg measurement quick. Excuse me, I'll grab my tape measure. It is 
the ABA stance that the thicker legged horses with the most feather and the coarsest feather seem to have the worst CPL symptoms and problems. We've gotten this not only through the DeKaiser thesis, but also from palpating hundreds of horses throughout this entire continent. So we have palpated horses from Wyoming and Washington to uh, New York and the Carolinas and the South and the Midwest. We've palpated horses all over. The horses with the thickest legs and the coarsest feather and the most feather seem to have the worst CPL. You can see the difference in these three mares, how they turned out. They're all 50%. These two have a similar dam. This one has a different dam. Holly is obviously the most European looking. She has the thickest legs, the most feather. I don't know if you can move around and see some of the feather. Or Aaron, you can turn towards the hay a little bit. Please turn her towards the hay a little bit. You see the amount of feather she has. You can see the nodules are already starting to poke through the hair back there. And we'll shave them off in a, in a, in a, in a future film so you can see what's going on under there. You see Hannah is lighter boned than Holly and she has some feathers but less. We'll shave hers off sometime so you can get a look. And finally we have Eve. These are all 50% European mares, 100% Belgian. And Eve, can you turn her toward the group three, Michael? I'm sorry about the hooks. I mean, they're just about ready to receive their shoes for the fall. Eve has the least feathers. She still has ample bone, but she definitely has thinner bone. So we'll just start with Eve, and we'll get a cannon bone measurement here. We'll just call that, thank you, Eve. We'll call that 10 and a half inches. Everybody that can see the film correctly sees I'm off by a little bit around 10 and a half inches. There's Eve. Here's Hannah. All 13 and a half years old, all half sisters, all fully Belgian. Eve's at about, or Hannah's at about 11 and a quarter. I don't know if you can see that or am I in the way? About 11 and a quarter inches. We'll go over to Holly. Holly, the most like her 100% father. She's our breaking mare, a tremendous mind. Don't get me wrong, the Europeans bring so much to the table with their good attitudes and their docile temperaments. Holly is, I got the numbers upside down, I apologize. Holly's cannonbone, about 12 and 3 quarters inches. I can do that better with the bigger print. I'm sorry, people. 12 and a half. I pull it tight into all them feathers and swelling about 12 and a half. So in a future film, we're going to shave these feathers off and see what's under there. So the ABA's theory is genes, genetics play a major role. Similar genetics, they exhibit themselves differently. This is the most European looking. Eve over there is the least European looking. Although she does not look like an American Belgian, she looks like an American Bourbon. Hannah's somewhere in the middle. Holly's the most European. They have three different personalities. That's all for a different film and they all excel at different things. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll shave these feathers off, we'll start treating the horses. For CPL, they all have a, at least a symptom or two of CPL, some worse than others, and we'll see whose theory holds up with the same management for 13 years and the genes exhibiting themselves differently. Thank you.